This is now in a short time clip what happens when the glass is put into the body. A progenitor cell gets turned on if it's capable of forming new bone. If it isn't capable, it's turned off and dies and gets out of the way. There's some real socioeconomic implications here, right? Okay. The new cells, the daughter cells, these two osteoblasts, then if the environment is right and the glass provides the right environment, they can then stimulate both the production of new cells, more cells which are needed, and the differentiation of the cell to grow bone matrix around them that mineralizes, it forms a strong composite living composite structure of bone. So three things can happen in the presence of a bone cell in a site, regardless of age, whether it's young people or old people, three things can happen. If the environment isn't right, the cells can die and get out of the way. If the environment is right, they can divide, proliferate, and begin to form new tissue. And then when the environment is really correct, they can mineralize and form new bone. But that is a very complicated sequence of events that is under genetic control that is present at the time when the egg is fertilized and we all begin as in become an individual. It was found that this process can occur in culture, in a test tube environment, in the presence of the primary bone cells with the, with the bioglass particles. It can actually form colonies of the bone cells that will mineralize. The gene expression experiments then began to t prove that this was under genetic control, and the first experiments were relatively small. Only 1,450 genes were analyzed. Subsequent experiments were done and were published using half of the whole human genome. 30,000 genes were analyzed in the presence of the bioactive gel glasses, the sort that Julian Jones is, is, is working on, in the presence of human embryonic stem cells, in fetal cells, well, as well as old people cells. In all cases, these results showed the same, that there were families of genes, in fact, seven families of genes, that were activated or upregulated by the presence of the glass. And this upregulation and activation occurs within the first 24 hours of exposure of the cells to the glass. A rapid response, which if we can learn to use the same understanding, we have the potential to regenerate all of the failing tissues of the body to regenerate the heart, the cardiovascular system, the lungs, the people. There are no solutions to, to chronic lung diseases now. But the possibility of using this information and this new understanding that it is possible to turn on the body's own regenerative processes give us the potential for solving this global challenge that is due to the social revolution that we inherited from our parents and grandparents. They give us all the hope of living to 80 to 100 years of age, but with a quality of life that is more than just sitting around in rest homes. As I said, it's been established now for embryonic stem cells in the presence of all sorts of the bioactive stimuli. And so I want to conclude this celebratory talk with an acknowledgement. I started to make a list, and it would have taken the whole 40 minutes to go through the incredible list of, of students, a number of which, former students which are here in the audience uh, today, and faculty colleagues, University of Florida and Imperial College, and many 20-some research groups worldwide that I've had the great privilege and honor to work with over my, my, my years. Oh, I can finish with to say, hey, it's been fun. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Larry. I think uh, there may be time for one question because uh, we know that we are standing between uh, lunch and the uh, session. So, so somebody has uh, maybe one question, a very quick one. Where, no. can, where can they buy it? <laughs> yes. Okay.
situation for the issue in the part. That's the regulation of the genes. Um, the final release, did you think on which line that's the regulation of the genes? Yes, I will, I'll repeat the question. It's a very important question because I think I went through it too fast. The critical ions that we now know are responsible for activating the genes are soluble, biologically active silicon ions and calcium ions, and each are required in a certain range of around 15 to 20 parts per million of the silicon and about 60 to 8 per parts per million of the calcium. Those two ions are what are involved in activating the nuclear response to the cells that leads to the differentiation. If you're outside that range, too low, class 1, or class, or class uh, B bioactivity or no bioactivity of all, if it's too much, the material then is overactive and so it's a critical concentration. Thank you. Of silica, calcium. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Larry. Let me give you this okay. bit of break. This uh, small oh, token of appreciation from the Methodist left side.